I'm going to share with you everything I know about editing lifestyle vlogs because editing lifestyle vlogs is very different and I feel like when I was starting my channel, I didn't know anything about what made a good vlog, how to edit the vlog, just the whole aspect of lifestyle vlogs. All I knew is what I saw with the finished product and everything else I would try to search on YouTube was really just how to edit in general, but there was no how I edit my lifestyle vlogs video. So that's what this video is. Welcome to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Jenna. I've been filming and editing my own lifestyle vlogs since October of 2020 and I'm really excited to film this video for you guys today because there are so many questions I've had along the way of how I edit certain parts of my YouTube videos just kind of like the whole editing process and I feel like there's nothing really out there on YouTube that addresses specifically lifestyle vlogs specifically long-form content that's sharing my life with you but also building a brand with that life at the same time it's a very like complex thing and honestly this is probably like the most challenging video that I've ever really had to prepare and I'm probably gonna forget stuff along the way there's just so much when it comes to editing my YouTube videos that I don't even know if I could put it all in one video. So I know I can't. So this is really part one of this how I edit like mini series. In this video, I'm going to share my screen and show you guys just overall what my Final Cut Pro looks like. Go through through the basics of my filming and editing setup. I'm going to go through my editing process with you in general where I open up Final Cut Pro, show you just kind of like each process of editing for me and what a finished project looks like or video. And then I'm gonna have a whole section on tips for adding flair and style to your lifestyle vlogs. Both very basic stuff like music, fonts, all that stuff, the things that I use, to other general tips and just kind of like things I've learned along the way of making my own lifestyle vlogs to add your own flair and style and brand to your channel. And then I will end with a Q&A because I did ask on my community tab if there's any specific questions that you guys have when it comes to editing my videos, what you really wanna know, like Jenna, what fonts do you use? How do you color grade? All that stuff. I'm gonna go through that today too. And then in part two of this little mini series, I'm going to actually edit a video with you guys in real time and show you my file management, my tips. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on file management, going through editing an actual video with you guys and just show you the whole process how long it takes and all that stuff so i'm really excited for this two-part series this is really just a more chatty sit down informational video if anything for this part one and i think that's everything so make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and let's get started with the basics also you guys this is my second time trying to film this video i tried filming this yesterday after work because i do also have a full-time nine to five corporate job if you guys are new to my channel and the sun was going down like i was rambling too much i never even actually shared my screen at all so I was like, okay, we're just gonna take a pause. I'll try this tomorrow morning. So it's currently 8 a.m. right now and I'm filming this before work, truthfully. Hi guys, I'll be popping in throughout the video to mention anything that I might have forgotten when I first filmed this the first time, or technically that was the second time. So this is my third time coming in. There are a couple things I forgot. So if I come in here and there, just don't mind me. This is all part of the same video. Also, I did prepare this video ahead of time. So if I look to the side, these are my notes. Okay, part one, the basics. First off, this is not a tutorial video. This is not how to edit a YouTube video. That's a separate video that I will show with you like edit a video with me. But I do wanna say that this is not like a tutorial on how to use Final Cut Pro. I will put in the description box a lot of the videos that I watch when it comes to learning how to edit at all. So this video is not meant to show you overall a tutorial on how to edit but this is just how I edit. So yeah, I do have to start the basics with that. But for the overall basics of what software I use, I do use Final Cut Pro, which is Apple's like editing software. So I have a MacBook Pro, I use Final Cut Pro, and that is a flat fee of $300 to purchase the editing software. When I bought my MacBook Pro in November of 2021, there was an option to just include all of the creator tools on the laptop when you bought it. So it was like an add-on. I do think it's expensive and you should probably start with iMovie if you're more a beginner when it comes to editing, but I use Final Cut Pro just because I feel like it gives me all the flexibility, creativity. It's also very easy to use, I think. It's very user-friendly, straightforward, and it's nice because there's no actual subscription. It's just a one-time fee of $300, and then anytime there's an update for the app or anything to the software in general, that's an automatic free update for you. I didn't always use Final Cut Pro. I do have a separate video if you want to watch that. It's a very, very old video, but I actually used to edit all of my YouTube videos on my iPad Pro because the laptop that I had before this MacBook Pro in 2021 was very old. It it could not hold anything. Like it was so old. The storage was constantly 
bringing it out of space. And so I was using my iPad Pro. And when I used that, I actually edited on an app that was $30 called LumaFusion. And I thought it worked really well for me. I really liked it. And it was a really good way for me to learn in general, just the very basics of editing. And then I was able to level up, upgrade, and learn more about the editing process and kind of become an intermediate with Final Cut Pro. So, but even that, there are so many things I don't use with Final Cut Pro. It's such a powerful software and tool that even I know I'm not using it to its best ability, but I do think that it works really well and it's just a very reliable software. My filming setup, I've mentioned this a couple of times just in anticipation of filming this video at all for you guys, but my filming setup is I am filming with you guys on a Sony ZV-E10, which is an interchangeable lens vlog camera. I use a Sony ECM G1 microphone, an external microphone that just goes on top of the camera. And then the lens that I'm using is a Sony 11 millimeter F1.8 wide angle lens. So everything's Sony. I really like it. I think it's such a good camera. Also, I'm filming on 4K. That's something that I'll talk about more in part two of this series, but I do film in 4K, 24 frames per second, aperture priority or intelligent auto. And so yeah, those are the basics. That's everything about my filming and editing setup. Okay, my editing process. Before I start sharing my screen, I just wanna go through with you as simply as possible, the, all the different steps for me of my editing process. Step one is a rough cut where you just throw in everything that you've filmed, put it in Final Cut Pro, don't touch anything, no editing anything. It includes all the sentences that I had to start over. It includes all of my long pauses. It includes everything that I would potentially want to cut out and I cut it all out. That is called, my friends, the rough cut. And that's a very like basic term that I think everyone knows. Rough cut just means you're taking out everything that you don't want in the video. You're cutting it all out. And then after that, you have no other edits. It's really just all cuts to your clips. And then you see kind of what you're working with for a general overview of how long your video actually is. During the rough cut, I also do time lapses. I, I'll use like the custom speed for a clip in Final Cut Pro to make it even faster so that my 30 minute clean with me is really only like 10 seconds or something. And then also in the rough cut, I will do my screen recordings too because it's just easier, I think, to edit it all at once. And then you kind of cut at the same time because when you film your screen recordings, you're also including all of the rough cut cutout time. So during the rough cut, I also do screen recordings. And now I'm going to share my screen with you guys and show you just in general Final Cut Pro. I don't have a video right now that I'm editing in real time. So I'm gonna show you guys all like finished videos, but I think it'll make more sense for me to share my screen and show you as I'm talking about it. Start screen recording now. That's what I do so that I can make sure I line it up when I edit. My most recent video that I have is a what I eat in a day video. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. The video that I'm gonna show you guys is just a typical work to live diaries day in my life. Work to live diaries is my video series on YouTube where I share with you guys just overall vlogs of my daily life having a normal nine to five job, but also just sharing life in general with it. I'm gonna zoom out. And if you like pinch your trackpad or click command minus, you can zoom out of your timeline, which is what this this overall space is and I'm gonna show you guys just what a finished video looks like for me typically when it's all done so we have intro and then everything you see that's not the actual clips here these are all layers so green is for sound purple is for text and then there's just like transitions that's what that looks like this is what a finished video looks like isn't this crazy so this is after i've gone through everything in my editing process let me actually take away everything that i haven't talked about yet and then i'll show you guys like what a rough cut looks like so if i just highlight everything press delete this is what a rough cut would look like. It's just pure clips, speeding up stuff. Oh, okay, there's there's some text, but you guys get what I mean. It just looks like purely video clips. I'm gonna do Command Z so I don't lose everything. And then when I add everything, all of the like flair and jazz and stuff, then this is what a finished video looks like. So let me backtrack a little bit and continue with my editing process. So we have the rough cut. And then once I do the rough cut, I add all the screen recordings if possible. I don't, I only really have screen recordings if I'm doing my plan with me videos. But other than that, I don't really use screen recordings. After that, I'll do music and transitions with specifically only days because when I'm editing my vlogs, since I'm usually editing either multiple days at once or timestamps within one day, I'll put my music in. So everything you see in green and I'll line up anytime that I'm having like B-roll or montage and I'll insert music so that it's obviously more fun for you guys to watch. And that's really part two. I'll put all the music in because text, it becomes, I like to add a lot of text when it comes to my vlogs. And I know you guys know that. So when I look at it all together, like it just looks like 
a lot. And so what I do strategically when I put in the music is I'll only put in either the new day or a new time so that I can get a sense of what the pacing is of that video to make sure I'm not like rambling too much when I'm talking or if I am talking it's as like concise as possible and I'm just kind of like overall pacing the video well so it's never dragging too much because dragging means it becomes boring. So that's what I'll do in that part of my editing process. I'll add all of the music and then I'll add timestamps. So let me actually, okay actually I'm going to open up a different video so that you guys can see like a week in my life. Oh, okay. Ignore this stuff because this just means I deleted it from my desktop. But overall, I think this was my week in my life. This is what a finished week in my life looks like. So it just looks literally crazy. And look at all the text here. Like I have no idea, honestly, the pacing of the video. But if I go in and look for a new day, let's say, I think around here, right here, Thursday. That's what I do during this part of my editing process. All of the extra fun text, that's not in yet. I just put in the music and I just put in the text for this new day so that I can get a sense of how long each day was, if I need to break up the day into two parts, yada, 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 all that stuff. So that's the next part of my editing process, I get a sense of pacing and I add the music because I think music is really fun. And I'll talk about where I get my music and stuff later, but that's the next step of my editing process. Then, as you can imagine, once I've done all of the music and transitions and stuff, then I will add in the fun text. And I think that is something that's different to every single creator. I like to put in a lot of text. I just think it's really fun. It makes it fun for you guys to watch. I try to be tasteful with it too, so I'm never doing too much text, but I like to put enough in to just add to the experience experience of you guys watching my videos, especially when I have like a big montage of something. I like to include text just so that it's still fun for you guys to watch and you're not just like listening to a video with a song for 30 seconds. And then just kind of any other relevant text, like what time it is, if there's captions, if there's anything I want to add, then I'll do that in a text overlay. So that's the next part of my editing process. And then after I add my text in, I will do any blurring and censoring that I need to. So it's usually just like my computer screen if I'm doing work to live diary just to make sure I'm not actually showing my work computer screen or if I accidentally left my unit number in a package I'll blur that out too that's what I'll do kind of after all the text is in and I'm just doing one more look through of the video like is everything looking good and is there anything that I need to blur out basically so once I do that that part usually doesn't take very long it takes like maybe under 30 minutes to put in all of the blurs I just I go through literally every part of the video to make sure like okay is my computer in this video or are there packages in this video and if so like I'm looking for those two things. And then at that point, I've added in all the text, all the transitions, all the music, it's all done. And then you guys, last part for me is I make my intro for my vlogs. And that's what you see at the very beginning. That's kind of why like when you look at videos, at least for me, it's very front loaded with a lot of edits in the beginning because the beginning, you guys, the intro, yes, it's like only 10 to 15 seconds of clips and it's only one song, but you guys, you have to be really mindful, at least for me, I'm really mindful of what clips I choose to include in the intro because even though they're very, very quick and that's just like an evolution of my intros over time, I'll make the intro last because I think it's actually the most like time consuming part. And especially at this point of making my videos, like the video's done. The content itself is actually done and making the intro is just putting everything that you've already finished back in the beginning with a really good, like catchy, eye-catching, interesting song. So that actually takes a lot of time I feel like in general to make the intro it could take upwards of maybe like an hour maybe 45 minutes to just do the entire intro because the intro is the most important part for me it's what will capture you guys and draw you guys into wanting to watch the rest of this like 20 to 30 minute video so isn't that crazy okay my intros I feel like I did not go into too much detail about my intros aside from the music but lately right now I think my style is like tango cha-cha, jazz, Mexico, like those genres of music and making them like a more dramatic intro. Really, really short clips to cut them up as quick as possible, include as much as I can of what the actual video is. And then another effect that I do specifically for the intro is the letterbox. If, if you click on this icon right here, it goes to your effects and transitions. If I type in letterbox, it took me a while to find this, I'll drag over the effect 
paste it in like this. This is what it looks like removed. I add it in letterbox and then I go to aspect ratio and I just choose usually the 2.55 just because it makes it very widescreen looking and I feel like it gives that kind of like cinematic look. So that's all I'll do. And then if in the intro, like let's say it's cutting out my forehead, this is a perfect example. I will use the offset to make the crop more centered with my face or whatever's in frame. So that's how I do my intros. I use the letterbox effect. I use all of my texts that I already talked about. I use just like complimentary pastel colors and then either cherry or that vintage yellow as like the main text color. And then yeah, I try my best to keep my intros to less than 15 seconds too, just for the sake of timing. That's actually a tip from one of my friends, Rachel, who said my intros do not have to be 30 seconds long. 15 seconds is totally good enough. And I honestly totally agree having her feedback. And then lastly, for the intro music, I will use the same song for my intro. And if I do have like a small montage in the beginning of the video after the intro, before I start talking, I'll use the same song for that too. So I think this is a perfect example of my intro and how they kind of typically go for my vlogs. And that's my whole editing process. I hope that was really helpful. And I hope that gave you a better idea of how how I personally edit. Again, this is no like how to edit. This is not a universal way. I'm not going to show you guys like exactly how to use Final Cut Pro and stuff, but I think it's really interesting to see how creators edit and what their timeline looks like. And it's probably really interesting for you guys too, if you're not creators, just to see overall what the back end is for me and how it all looks. So I also will say I'm going back to Final Cut Pro, a whole finished video that you guys can see. If it's a week in my life vlog, that's the longest type of video for me to edit just because I'm literally including so so much footage of the week and for week in my life videos it's usually around like two to two and a half hours of footage and that's with me trying to be really intentional of when I'm filming and not filming too much it starts with usually at around two to two and a half hours that will eventually go back down to 20 to 30 minutes of a video but if it's just a typical day in my life or like maybe two day vlog, I'll have around an hour to an hour 30 that will go to a like 17 to 25 minute vlog. So it cuts down a lot, you guys, like from time lapses, everything that I'm like stumbling over my words, just stuff that I feel like is overall boring, like setting up clips and then getting to the shot that I wanna start with, all that gets cut and edited. And then you're left with around like 40% of your original time, which is just crazy. But I think that's really interesting too. Next, I wanna talk just really briefly about what shortcuts I use on Final Cut Pro. Like I said, this is not everything that you can do on Final Cut Pro, and this is not an overall catch-all of like how to edit, but I do want to mention the shortcuts that I use all the time because I think it's really helpful and learning shortcuts actually just cuts down on your overall editing time and it just helps you be more efficient. You know, I feel like when it comes to your job or any type of job, anything that you really put a lot of time and effort into, if you can find ways to be more efficient without sacrificing the quality of your final deliverable, that's the key to being smart smart about this. So I tried my best to think of all the shortcuts that I use on like a typical basis that helps me be more efficient. So, and these are all defaults. You can customize your keyboard to choose shortcuts that will be best for you so you can make it like even more efficient. But personally for me, I just use the default Final Cut Pro shortcut. I just think it's easy for me to tell other people if it's something that they don't have to like customize themselves, but you can customize it if you want. Command B is how you cut one layer. And I just do that all the time. Like I have my thumb on the command and then I have my index finger on the B and doing the rough cut, I just do Command B, Command B, Command B. And then if you are editing multiple layers at once, so if I have like a screen recording on top or if I wanna cut out the sound of a particular song and you want to cut multiple layers at once then that is shift command b and that saves a lot of time too because i don't have to click on every single thing in the same place and cut it all three separate times i can just cut it all at once and that saves a lot for my time too other basic shortcuts that i'm sure everyone knows is the space bar is to play and pause so a lot of times when i'm in my like editing zone i'll just use my trackpad to scroll back and forth between my timeline or like my whole entire project i'll hit on the space bar to play and pause and then if I I have something I want to cut, I'll just scroll back a little bit, hit command B, cut it, play it again and start over. And then it just kind of goes into kind of like an assembly line of editing my rough cut. That's like my typical kind of like efficient way. I just use the space bar, command B or shift command B if I'm using screen recordings. And then I'll just use my trackpad to scroll back and forth and click on the next clip, if that makes sense. Okay, and then other shortcuts, if you hit command left and right, it will go to the very beginning 
or end, depending on which one you choose, of the next clip. So it's really nice when, let's say I'm editing something really long and I've finished the rough cut, there's nothing to do, and I just wanna to go to the next clip altogether, or if I'm just going back and forth between clips, using the command left and right is really helpful for that. And then also when I'm doing my rough cut, I'll use shift left and right. That will go back, I'm pretty sure like, it's like 0.5 seconds or it goes back some certain amount. When I'm being really precise within my rough cut, if I just wanna take out me taking a deep breath, if I stumbled over my words for like half a sentence and I just wanna cut off one thing, but I don't wanna scroll back all the way to the beginning of the clip, I'll just click on shift left and right because I know that I just need to go to the beginning of me saying that word, if that makes sense. And then I'll cut that and carry on. I hope that makes sense. I feel like Everyone has a different editing flow. This is just what I think is most efficient. I do my rough cut. I feel like the rough cut is like 70% of my editing problems. <laughs> like it just takes so long to do the rough cut. So I feel like when it comes to shortcuts, I've just prioritized the best that I can to find shortcuts that will make my rough cut a lot faster. If you hit on the L as you're editing, it will actually play back your video in I think like 1.5 or two times speed, which is amazing. Like you would be surprised how much that helps you with your editing process. It will be so much faster. So everything, especially when I'm speaking, I'll just hit L. And if I was really good about like not stumbling over my words, then I can kind of just breeze through the clip and really only cut times that I'm like taking a deep breath or saying like or um if i had to start over a sentence wrong because when you're on camera you'd be really surprised like i'm trying my best to talk to you guys as conversationally as possible but when you hit record and you're looking at the bulb of the lens you'd be surprised like how much you just misspeak because it's so like not natural but even when i am speaking with people in real life i stumble over my words all the time so stuff like that where i'm trying to make it a little bit more polished l will speed up your video so you can cut stuff a little bit quicker and then k will stop and i think j will go backwards command up and down is the same thing as like squeezing in or out on your trackpad. It's just zooming in and out on your timeline. So you can just kind of zoom in and be more precise with your cuts. Something else that I totally forgot to mention that I do in my editing process when I do the rough cut, something that really, really saves me a lot of time. And especially on the days where I don't want a video to be like too edited, if I don't need too many texts, specifically with text, I feel like that's where I really go overboard. I will use the M shortcut. The M shortcut, which I'll show you right here. This is actually the how I edit video as we're speaking, which is crazy but that's like a weird vortex. But this little marker right here, that's where I will include notes or just kind of like things to go back to. So when I'm doing the whole rough cut, it kind of just saves me a lot of time to get through the rough cut at all. If my sole purpose is to just cut clips, what I'll do to remind myself of just like certain things is the M. So if I click on M, it will add a marker and then I can choose like what I want the marker to be. I can say like add screenshot of something, you know? I'll finish the whole rough cut, yada, 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 yada. And then and I'll go back in and just go to specifically those markers where then I can add my screenshot, my overlay, my text, like whatever it is. A lot of times if I like really need to save myself time and I just wanna finish my video, make sure that I've included everything that I need to and not go overboard with all of the text, then I'll do the markers for specifically the rough cut, add my music, and then go back into just the markers and add the text then. So it's really nice because one, it makes me more efficient when I do my rough cut. I can just look at this. Okay, let me find one here. I know I have them in the beginning. If I double click on this marker, it says like add Final Cut Pro screenshot because this is where I mentioned that I use Final Cut Pro as my editing software at all. So to enhance the video and add a nice overlay, I'll include a screenshot of the Final Cut Pro logo. So actually let's do that together. Final Cut Pro logo. This is what I'll do if I want to add any screenshots or something. I'll just Google the image. I can figure out where the image came from. I can tell it's this Final Cut Pro image right here. I'll right click that, save image as, and then Final Cut Pro logo 2015 save. I can see that I saved it as a PNG. The first time I saved it, it was an HTML, which does not count, but I'll go to the import signal right here and then go to desktop Final Cut Pro. And then I will usually copy to library if it's a screenshot, but if it's footage, I'll click on leave files in place. This is just to save myself storage on my laptop. I'll copy to library. If I want to copy it over, I can delete it from my desktop. And then if I click on leave files in place, if I ever delete this screenshot from my desktop, then it'll also be deleted from Final Cut Pro, if that makes sense. So either before or after this clip where you guys saw like the red, like media not found or something, that's because I had leave files in place and then I deleted the actual file from my desktop. So for the purposes of this video, I will do copy to library, import selected, and then all I have to do is drag the screenshot in like this make it smaller. These toggles right here are how you add your edits in and manipulate like the size and 
shape, all that stuff. I'll drag it over. And then what I'll do a lot of times to just kind of like make it more seamless is I'll add a transition to the end of the image. So when I play it back, it will dissolve like this. That's how I add my screenshots and that's how I use the marker tool. That's the M shortcut is so helpful. It really saves me so much time when I'm editing. So there's that. What else did I miss? FN left and right. That goes to the beginning and end of the video. So specifically when I'm doing my intros, let me go back to my day in my life that I just finished. If I'm making my intro, I will do FN right. That will go to the end of the video. I'll scroll back. I'll be like, okay, I want to include this and this in my intro. And then I'll highlight it using the command. You can highlight certain clips, command C to copy those clips. And then I'll do FN left, go straight to the beginning of the video, and then I will paste them in. It's really, really nice. Again, and I think shortcuts like that really save me a lot of time. So I don't have to right click, click on copy, scroll all the way through, right click, paste. Using the copy and paste, just like you would for like a Word document is just, it really saves so much time. And FN left and right is really helpful for skipping to the beginning and end of a video, especially if you're making your intros. Command C is to copy attributes. So if I have like censoring or if I've already color graded that one clip, then I'll just command C all of the like attributes or really like effects and edits on the clip and then I can go to all the clips and the rest of that like scene or environment and then I can paste actually all of those attributes so that it has the same effects and edits by doing shift command V and then you can click on what things you can include with those edits. I'll put something on top of the screen so it makes more sense, but shift command V is so nice. And again, like I think when you incorporate shortcuts and you just, you almost use your trackpad like as least as possible, it just makes things a lot more efficient when you're editing, especially in the more mundane parts of editing, like the rough cut, it just helps so much so that you can get to the fun part, which is what I'll talk about next. That marks the end of this editing process. Section. Next, I want to talk to you guys about just overall like basics and then tips for adding your own flair and style to your videos and vlogs, which is really overall just like a fun way of saying what is your brand and what do you want? What vibe do you want to give off with your videos and how do you want to portray that vibe with your edits? Music, two places that I get my music are Hello Thematic and Epidemic Sound because those are two platforms that provide copyright free music. If you do want to potentially monetize your videos, Hello Thematic and Epidemic Sound, I feel like are the two platforms that people really use the most. They're very different though. Hello Thematic has a lot of like vocal based music and, and they partner up with a lot of like small artists that want to get their music out there. So, so it's mostly a lot of vocals and some kind of instrumentals, but more vocals. Epidemic Sound has just, honestly, it's like Hello Thematic times a thousand. If I could recommend one, I would do Epidemic Sound just because I think it's worth the extra money and there are vocals on that platform too, but you just get so much more music. You can choose by genre. You can choose just the instrumental part of a vocal based song. And it's just like overall, I think a lot smarter of a platform. There's a lot more on there. So yeah, that's where I get all of my music and then the texts. Okay, I will just put on the screen right here the name of all three texts that I use most often for my videos. I love these texts. I think that they pair very well together and I think that it just, kind of creates overall, like I said, like this is what the vibe I want my videos to be. I feel like text is a really big part of adding that style to your videos. And I get all of my texts on this website called Creative Market. These are all actually fonts that I had to pay for to use commercially. Final Cut Pro has so many options for text. I just felt like there wasn't enough that was like creative to show my style. So all the texts that I showed you guys are probably around like $15 each for you to use commercially. So you can make money if you do include them in your videos. And yeah, Creative Market, they have so much stuff, not just fonts, there's like images you can purchase, lots of stuff that you can purchase commercially. And then video transitions. So the paper transitions, I'll do an example right here. Those paper transitions were actually only $10, I think, maybe $15 from Ty Paley. She's the girl that made my channel branding. So like the intro and outro where I have my name and the weekly notepad that I use and all of my work to live diaries videos, that's all created by her. And I love her so much. I would really recommend you guys check out Ty Paley because she has so many digital downloads. Similar to Creative Market, she designs her own digital downloads for you guys to purchase and use on your own videos and make money from them. So a subscribe pop-up, text overlays, including 
creating your Instagram, different transitions, that she just has so much that I really think this is what adds like your personal style and your personality really to your videos. I would definitely recommend Ty Paley for you to look at her stuff because it's all very affordable too. And then I do also wanna give a shout out to transitions and effects that I use on Final Cut Pro specifically. So when you buy Final Cut Pro, this is the stuff that I use to intro and outro to transition my text and music. I'll use, and this is mainly for text, I'll use slide. I'll use wipe where it just kind of like appears but quickly and then I'll use cross dissolve to just dissolve the text away from the screen. Those are all the transitions I use. Everything else I feel like it's just kind of overkill for me personally. Again that's why I'm using Final Cut Pro not to its best ability but I just use very simple things. I want to try to keep it minimal too so it's not like too much craziness at once. And then for sound effects I'll use the swish that's defaulted on Final Cut Pro but then I get all of my other sound effects on Epidemic Sound. They do have sound effects too or this website called Mixit which is just a free website for you to get like computer clicks, keyboard typing, um, just different like dings and stuff I'll find on Mix It or Epidemic Sound. And I would just save all those two. I'll show you guys. Actually, I can show you right now. I have a separate like library in Final Cut Pro called Branding. And I think this is what everyone will do a little bit differently. But when I'm done with all these videos, so for example, the week in my life, if I want to close out the video, but keep it in my files, I'll just delete everything here so that all the files are deleted. I'll show you this more in part two next time. I'll close the library so that it just kind of makes my Final Cut Pro not like too chaotic. And then I have a separate library that's always open at all times where it has my intro. So like all the little pop-ups and stuff. This is from Ty Paley. And then sounds. These are all from Mix It or Mix Kit. Mix Kit. And this is the stuff that I use all the time. So I'll just put all of the examples here for you guys to see. And then I have all of my transitions too. These are from Ty Paley, this cute little like paint and then the paper transitions. That's where I keep all of my stuff that I download from like external third parties. I'll just keep it all in an open library at all times so that I can copy and paste and it's like very efficient that way. That's my branding and then just a very, very quick tutorial. This is where I get all of my transitions and effects. And then also when I'm editing, I like to keep these things on. So this little toggle button means that it goes to the beginning and end of each clip. So it's very crisp if you wanna add your text like right when that clip starts versus like scrolling over if that makes sense and then here you can like include the sound if you're scrolling through so those are the ones i usually have on and oh color grading so many of you guys are always asking jenna how do you color grade what do you use to color grade what do you do do you have filters do you have LUTs? so let me just give like a quick backstory on color grading color grading really just means adding a filter to your videos and like adjusting the colors of that video so for this clip right now that you guys are seeing here is what the original clip looks like like no color grading nothing and then when I add on my color grading here's how it looks so I think color grading is also a part of adding your own like channels brand and vibe to a video makes it very unique it's very like specific to you and I want like I want my videos to feel like warm bright and colorful when you guys are watching so I feel like my color grading like complements that vision I have for my channel I do manually color grade now but I used to just use which is essentially just another like it's like a video term for a filter and you have to add those manually by either through like a third party kind of thing on Final Cut Pro or just googling free Final Cut Pro LUTs on YouTube. I would actually not google it. I would search it on YouTube and then you can see all the different options of free LUTs or filters that you can download onto your Final Cut Pro and then there's like a whole tutorial on how you even do that because I don't know how. And then you can save them and always include those LUTs or filters on your clips and then that's how you can create your own color grading. I used to do that but then I was just like no this is not what I want. This is not the vibe that I want to give off. I'm just going to manually learn how to color grade. That was like a big goal for me in 2023. I'll link it in the description box and I'm just going to give you like a small screen recording here of Dustin. You guys watch that video. I literally learned how to color grade completely on my own through that one video. If there's any video that you guys watch, I feel like most of you really ask about the color grading on how I edit. Dustin, that video 
is so good and he shows you overall just like you really have to learn the color wheel and like what colors to complement and to manipulate to give off the vibe that you want but his videos are very like vintage like I think he calls it like coming of age aesthetic and I love that and so once I learned that and I saw how he color grades I was like okay how do I make this more me and then that's how I came up with my current color grading so I hope you guys like it I'll put like the color wheel here for you guys to see if you do want to use it but I really thought about gatekeeping it you guys because I was like this is like my unique style and if anyone wants to use it then they're just gonna have my style but I hope they know that they got it from me or they shout me out or something I don't know <laughs> but color grading I feel like is what is most sacred to a creator maybe that's just my opinion but I just feel like color grading is really what can level up a video and make it look more like wow factor so okay color grading I feel like I was not that clear on how I actually color grade and that's really because similar to what I was talking about with LUTs and using like a third party tool and adding them in and then downloading certain LUTs, if you just choose your own color wheel and you essentially like create your own LUT or filter for your YouTube video, then you can save it as an effect. So let me show you. Okay, this is what this original clip looks like before any color grading. You can see kind of the difference. It's like a little bit more pastel-y after it's color graded, but here's just like the raw clip overall. Same thing, if I go to effects and I type in preset, cause that's what I've named it, light warm summer preset. I don't know why. I made this preset in the summer and I wanted to name it, I guess, light warm summer preset, but I feel like it just became my brand's preset, if that makes sense. So I can save it over, drag it like this, and then it's on and it's so easy. I feel like some people use adjustment layers to color grade, but personally, I don't do that because I just feel like it adds more steps than I need. All I do is I save my color board. So let's see if I have my original color board, let's say I wanna make a new preset at all. I'll go to this colorful triangle on the editing sidebar or pane. I don't know the official names of these. And then I'll go to color. And then you can see what the color palette is for my preset. But let's say I wanted to change it and make it like, okay, it was off before, right? Okay, so now that it's off and it's on now, let's say I wanted to make something very, very cool toned and make it look like, I guess like green and wintery, not that warm toned. Let's see, I could just make something kind of like this, turn the exposure down to make it a little bit darker. Let's say I wanted to save this as my full preset for winter. I would go to save effects preset, winter preset, and you wanna add all of the color boards that you want. So since this is something that I've already done before, I just wanna add color board number two because that's the color board that I made all of these changes on. Everything else is staying the same because I'm only changing the effects. I'll click on save. And then I like to name them preset just because that's how I know it's something that I've made and not something that Final Cut Pro has made or like a third party plugin that I used to use. So for example, if I wanna remove all attributes, I'll go to edit, remove attributes, and then you wanna remove all color corrections. So now I'm back to, again, the original file. And then I can just go to my winter preset like this. And then there it is, it's so nice. And honestly, I like to do very minimal color grading, not minimal, but something that's very easily copy and pasted for the entire video when I try my best to keep the color grading minimal enough that I wouldn't have to change it so much in certain lightings. And that's why also I really like the camera. It changes the shutter speed and the aperture based on what the lighting is around me. So it's really nice. And then once I have my preset on one clip, I can do Command C and then I click on one clip hold the shift button and then click on like, you know, the last clip, let's just say the end of the video is right here and it will highlight all of the clips in that one layer and then shift command V. And then I can choose which attributes I wanna paste over to the rest of the clips, if that makes sense. So that's like my very efficient, quick way of color grading. I chose my own color palette. I saved it as a preset applied it to one of my clips and then copied those attributes onto the rest of the clips in the video. Okay, hopefully that was more helpful. I feel like the first time I did that, it was, I didn't, was not clear enough. <laughs> That's one question that you guys have a lot. And then just overall, like I really only have a couple of tips for adding your own flair and style. If you guys are editing videos or this is really just something that I try to keep in mind, there are some instrumentals that I feel like every single vlog uses. Like I'm just gonna put them right here. I 
feel like I see those sounds everywhere, especially for lifestyle vloggers, because I know that it's easier to just keep the music that you've downloaded and just keep using it over and over. And I actually used to do that for my intro. If you guys have watched my videos since 2022, I used to use the same intro music and it would feel kind of more like, like a TV show intro, like you guys knew kind of what to expect. But ultimately, I think I decided that having the same music all the time is just boring. So a lot of the time, I will try my best. I'll sift through Epidemic Sound and try to find a sound that one, hasn't really been used too too much and two something that just feels unique and feels like my style i'll download it i'll use it for maybe like maybe like three three to five videos so that i'm not finding new music every single video and then i'll just delete it and find new stuff every couple videos so i really like doing that just because i feel like it keeps you guys as the audience like more engaged and if there's new music then you're like oh ooh, i like that song instead of being like okay i already know this song i can just like skip through this part of the video i think maybe there's like one or two just like jazz sounds that i keep in the background for like sponsors and stuff but for the most part i try my best to at least like rotate if i'm not just using the same stuff all the time if i'm not downloading entirely new songs i'll just try my best to rotate them out so that there's like months have passed since you've last heard that one song that and then text even though i shared with you guys the text that i use i would really encourage you to just like explore creative market explore defont.com those are mostly free fonts and just choose fonts that best go with your brand and the fonts themselves i really only change up i think like maybe every six months this year actually i feel like i've been really good about not doing new fonts but I used to just change it up all the time. And that's like the fun, I think, of editing videos. You can change your fonts whenever you want. You can change your music whenever you want. You can change overall your editing style literally whenever you want. So it's finding the balance of like, okay, I'm trying to build my brand. I want it to be clear, like what I want my videos to look like mostly versus experimenting and trying new things. I think there should be a balance of both. And I think that's everything for my test. I really just had those two tips. Just try your best to not do the stuff that you feel like all of the other lifestyle vloggers are doing and figure out what makes you feel unique and your flair and style and this like added fun part of editing. Okay, oh my God. Last part of this video, q and I just wanted to like rapid fire some questions that you guys specifically had with editing. Okay, how I learned to edit is, I'll put all of those videos in the description box, but I really just searched on YouTube how to use Final Cut Pro and I watched a lot of other similar videos. I think Hannah Elise has a video about how she edits and she kind of goes through more in real time. That's like what my part two video will be for you guys, of walking through with you each part of the process. But I feel like I did show you guys a lot in this video, so I hope it makes more sense. I did not take a course or anything. I just watched a bunch of tutorials literally for hours, like for hours on end on how to edit and how to use Final Cut Pro at all. How do you edit TikToks slash shorts content on your phone? So for all short form content, it's really simple. I just use the app CapCut just because for me, short form content is like voiceover content for me because I don't do that on YouTube and I want to differentiate what type of content I do short form versus long form because I really only recently got into short form. My short form content is a lot of like voiceover, like come along with me on a day in my life type of vlog. And I'll do that on CapCut. I'll take all the clips on my phone, import them on this app called CapCut, and then I'll make the voiceover on that. So that's what I use. I think this is my last edit. For my short form content, I use CapCut for all of my like voiceover TikToks and stuff, but for specifically the short form content that's just a remake of my intro of my YouTube video. What I essentially do is I'll just copy the entire intro and then start a new project. Here, let me just make it, let me just make it with you right now. File, new project. And then in video, instead of doing 4K, which is what I usually do for all of my videos, I will click on vertical. It changes the resolution automatically. Everything else I just keep the same. And then I click OK. I'll just paste in my intro like that. So I'll go to the beginning of the video, so zoom in a little. I'll highlight everything like this, including the sound. Command C. Go to my new project, Command V, and then here's everything that I've copied over, but now it's in the wrong dimensions. So I will just zoom in the video and then change the size of the fonts so that I have a fully working intro for the dimensions of a vertical video. And then I airdrop it to my iPhone and upload it to Shorts, YouTube Reels, and Instagram that way. Otherwise, I'll just use CapCut and film everything on my phone. I'm not gonna edit this intro in real time with you because I'll do that in my how I edit a vlog video that's coming in part two. So stay tuned for that, but that's just an overview of how I make my short form content for both my phone and for my YouTube videos. 
how do you decide what to film? So when I film my plan with me videos, you guys see on my Google calendar portion what videos I've planned out for the month. And I do that on purpose. Honestly, me choosing what videos to make is really simple just because I am a lifestyle vlog. And I do have like a series on my channel that will make up most of my videos, like probably 75% or like 60% of my videos, my work to live diaries, which is really just vlogs during the work week. So a lot of my videos are really easy to choose. I've been trying to challenge myself a little bit more and do more like themes within work to live diaries. So one was like how I work out, one was how I eat balanced and healthy, one was I think like how I balance like specifically YouTube during work. That's how I'll choose. I'll just think about like what value should I give in this one video and how can I incorporate that into what I'm already sharing on my daily life. So that's kind of like my thought process on how I choose my videos. I don't really do like trends. That's another question that you guys have. Like, I don't really do what's trending, really. I don't do seasonal content. I don't really do like a lot of routine videos. I feel like my brand is sharing my life and sharing aspects of how I balance everything in like a normal person's life on top of having like a, a passion or a side hustle. So my video concepts, I feel like are pretty easy on that front because they're all really vlogs. If there's like sit down videos, it's like apartment hunting or long distance running tips, like very kind of outside the box and outside of my like typical brand to challenge myself as a creator. That's how I'll choose those videos, but I don't really do trending videos which is probably why I don't have like 100,000 subscribers, but I just, I don't think it's me. Questions on how I choose my cool text. Like I said, I'll put them right here again for you guys to see. Thumbnails, I use Procreate and I have a separate video actually on when I was a lot more like artistic with my thumbnails. I would do everything on Procreate and I still do just because I had to pay for the app and I think it's fun doing it on Procreate. But since I do my thumbnails very minimally now, I think you could just use Canva. I just take screenshots of my videos. When I'm filming, I try my best to like be mindful of like what's a good thumbnail moment and then I'll pose for a second and then go back to the video. But I'll screenshot that and include that as my thumbnail, that's really simple. If you had to guess what percentage of the content you film makes it to the final version, I'm interested to know how much footage you produce gets to a 20, 30 video output. So like I said before, my rough cut, just like with time lapses, everything, everything for a week in my life is around two to two and a half hours for a day or work days or like weekend. That will be usually around like an hour 15 to an hour 30, I guess just depending on how many time lapses I'm doing. But usually I keep mostly everything that I talk about. It's really just like if I'm rambling. So if I want to cut down certain things, but I think for the most part, I keep like 75%. It's really just like cutting out the times that I'm not speaking right or cutting out the times that I'm like taking too long of a pause or if something happened in the video, like stuff like that. But I would say around like 60 to 75%. But if I'm talking, like most of it, like 90%. <laughs> okay, and then in terms of how long the video takes, how long a video takes to edit is such a such a long-winded question. And I'm just gonna give a really long range because it's really true. Like for sit-down videos, they're a lot quicker to edit because the rough cut is usually around like 45 minutes and then it'll get to like around 20 to 25 minutes of just sitting down and speaking. It's a lot more draining to film, but I think it's a lot quicker to film and edit. So that will usually take around like, maybe around three hours to do a sit-down video which is so nice. It used to be a lot longer, but like I said, with all the shortcuts and stuff, being more efficient, I have become a lot quicker with editing my sit-down videos. Vlogs, if it's usually 20 to 35 minutes of a finished product video, that will probably take me like eight, on average, like eight hours to finish editing. So, and then like a whole separate hour to do the description box, timestamps and product links. So all in all, it takes, it takes a lot of time, you guys. And that's like the struggle of like how I really stay up to date with my content. I'm just always editing like everything. And that's why I try to take one video off a month to give myself like a very small break. But even then I'm always editing. Like it's just a part of my daily lifestyle. And I say this in every single video where you guys are asking for like tips on how to be a creator, how to grow. You have to incorporate editing into literally every single aspect of your free time. And when you do that, you have to be really intentional about like no editing time so that you can try to be more balanced and rest. But yeah, I really just edit like all possible times that I can before and after work. So yeah. Filming and editing schedule really just depends on what I've planned out for that month. I really like planning my videos for the month. I can get a better sense of like what days to film so I can like mentally prepare myself and I'm not like scrambling, which is what I did a lot last year. Oh, okay. What effect I use to have music play in the background. I'll show you guys right here in a walkthrough, but when you have music, you can actually 
manipulate how much of the volume of that music clip is shown. So I'll usually put the volume to like 20% or something. So that it's playing very softly in the background and it's just like ambiance music. And that's usually when I use like jazz and stuff, but you can toggle the volume of each clip. Even if you're speaking any clip, you can toggle the volume. So you can bring volume up, bring volume down. And that's how I do like background music. Like I said, editing. If you're editing on an iPad Pro, use LumaFusion. I really liked LumaFusion. I do think they have Final Cut Pro now for iPads, but I have no idea how to use that. I'll show you guys right here a walkthrough of how to speed up clips. And, and again, I'll do all this better in like an edit a YouTube video with me video, but that's not coming next. That's coming like probably next month. <laughs> okay, and then this is the last question. I think I've answered everything else. Do I like plan out every single scene in my vlogs? And the answer is no. I keep everything as like real time and how I'm really feeling, how the day's actually going as best as I can. And I don't really like actually formulate anything, but I will say if I have like a themed video, if like the title of the video is like, the I'm so busy vlog, then I know I'm going to be talking about like stress and how to overcome like feeling so busy. I'll try my best to remember the theme of the video. And as I'm filming throughout the days or day, I'll try to remember like, okay, <laughs> what have I done in the last part of like filming? And how can I bring it back to like the value of the video, why they clicked on this video. So I'll try my best to section out like me working with me speaking about whatever the title is related to and then me working and then me speaking to something else about just like my life. So I try my best to like balance it all out with like value of the actual video for someone that's possibly new, value of like getting to know me as a person and creator and my brand, and then just like editing fun montages. That's I feel like my whole secret sauce and formula. And that's everything. And my camera is literally gonna die. So I'm gonna finish off this video, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. This is very, very long. I hope this video was really helpful and make sure you're subscribed because part two is probably coming next month and I can't wait to film that. I'm actually really proud of myself because I've been meaning to film this video for like so many months and I even tried yesterday. It was just a total fail. Make sure you guys leave a comment. Let me know if you did find it helpful or not or if you have any extra questions, I will answer them of course and I will see you guys in a new video very, very soon. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. I post new videos every Tuesdays and Fridays. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video but until then, miss you already.